Mm-hmm. Father God, we thank you for who you are. That song says that even when I don't feel that you will look you. Mm-hmm. And it says you never stop. You never stop walking. Mm-hmm. You never stop walking. Mm-hmm. You are the way maker, the miracle walker, the promise keeper. You are the light in the darkness. Mm-hmm. And we thank you because this is who you are to us. You bring light mm-hmm. to our darkness. You bring, mm-hmm. you make a way for us, even in our wilderness experiences. Oh, we say thank you. You bring healing to our bodies. Thank you. You bring deliverance and you put the enemy to shame on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And as we go into your word, we ask that the Lord you breathe on us again. Help us to understand as you have instructed us that those that read this should understand. Give us the spirit of understanding this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to continue our sharing today about the timeline and the events of our day. So this will be the second part of that preaching. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible's end times message are referred to as the eschatology, you know, which uh, which is a period of tribulations. Okay. And, uh, it, and that tribulation now leads to the coming of Jesus Christ. And it, it, Jesus is not just going to come, but he's going to come to establish his kingdom upon the earth. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there is any hope in, that is left in us, this should be what we're waiting for. Yeah. Hallelujah. This should be what we are what? Waiting for. As believers, as children of God. Understand this. There's no prayer, there's no fasting that can stop what God has planned. There's no scheme of any politician. There is no military personnel. There is no army upon the face of the earth that can stop God from doing what he has promised to do. This earth, by the way, understand this, is doomed. Okay? This, that's why we are going to experience the catching up, the departure of the saints from the earth. Even those that are dead and those that are alive, when he comes, he's going to catch us out of, out of here. That's why Jesus was emphasizing in the scripture we shared last week, and we're going to share it again today, he said, pray that your flight does not occur during winter. And I lay emphasis on that, that winter time is like a spiritual moment that you don't feel like carrying out spiritual assignments. Amen. When you don't feel, because winter time, you want to feel cozy, you don't feel like going out to work, you don't even want to eat, you want somebody to just, you want to order for food, you want to get out of the duvet, you know, get there. Ah, that's the lazy time. All right? When Jesus was saying, pray, pray. And we need to understand, when Jesus prays certain prayers, we got to pray it. Are you getting me? When Jesus ever said and said, pray this kind of prayer, we've got to pray it. Because what he said is going to come to pass. Your flight, your time of departure does not happen when it is winter time, when it's your spiritual laziness is at the as is at the peak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're gonna be unveiling more scriptures, like I said, you know, the, the, the end time message is called, is called the eschatology, and which is the study of the end of the world in human history or the present age and the beliefs about the final destiny of humankind and individual souls. Alright? So those are things that we are, you know, unveiling to ourselves this this past week and we're going to continue as the Lord gives us the capacity to do so. Amen. Amen. And listen, the reason why we're sharing this 
as the Lord put it in my heart during this time, is so that we don't live our lives as ignorant people. Hello, church. There are so many ignorant children of God. Ask them what is God's agenda for now. They have no idea. And if we go to church for like 10 years, 20 years, 50, you know, some cases 30, 50 years, and yet they don't have a clue about the agenda of God. So what have they been going to church to do? Praise God. So we need to understand that we, we, we don't have to live ignorantly. Some people, the reason why they go to church is to use the church as a means to get what they want physically. So as the events are happening and will be happening, what are our expectations? Okay, because we need to know what, what are we supposed to do. How many of you remember the sons of Issachar? The Bible says that they know times and seasons. They don't just know the times and seasons, they know what Israel ought to do. So there are people of wisdom, a tribe of wisdom that has the knowledge of what is about to happen and they know what they're supposed to do during those times. So what is our expectation? Second John chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 I find this scripture very interesting. The Holy Spirit just dropped it in my heart while I was studying earlier this morning and he said I'm going to read 2 John chapter uh, 1. I'm going to read verse 2 to 4. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. Are you there? Somebody's still struggling to open. Okay, let me hold on a little bit. 3 John, we have, you know, we have, you've got the 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John. It's the, it's the book before the book of Jude. Right? I read now. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Just as what? Your soul prospers. What does this imply? Before I read the rest of it, it simply the word soul. There is talking about your spiritual life. So the pros, your physical prosperity must be in commensurate with your spiritual advancements too. Are you following me? Your your being in good health, you know, prospering in all things. By the way, money is not prosperity. It's not prosperity. Okay, prosperity is not money. You can. You can have money and not prosper. But you cannot say that you are prosperous without having money. Are you with me? Yes. So when we're talking about prosperity, money is involved, but it is not money. So our goal with this scripture is not to talk about money. So it's to talk about wholeness, completeness. Hallelujah. He says, I wish and pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. That means we pursue these two realm, pari pursue together. We aim at it together. You don't pursue one and leave the other, or pursue the other and leave the other. Just like Jesus told the Pharisees, He said, "You know how to pay the tithe of the comings and the and the and the, uh, the, the comings. You know how to pay that tithe, but you left the weighty matters of the law alone, which is you know justice, which is you know mercy, you know, but." It is expected of us as God's people to be able to pursue both at the same time. You don't neglect God to say you are pursuing a career. By the time you are done with your career, you would have been so far away from God. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So it is expected of us in this moment to know what we are supposed to do. You pursue God first, then Whatever it is that you want to do upon the face of the earth. Because mind you, nothing in this world is permanent. Your certificate is not permanent. It can only take you thus far. When you get to the peak of your career, you will retire. And that certificate becomes what? Useless. 
your house. We pray there is no tornado, there is no oh, you know, flood. But those days, what? Or hurricane. It can be taken away. These are the lessons that our environment is teaching us. Your nice, good looking car can disappear in a moment. But one person that lasts forever is God. And if you neglect that God and pursue all those, by the time you come back, you would have been so far away and you, you would have lost those things. So what is it that is expected of us? Verse 3 says, For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. Just as you walk in what? In the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So we are expected to walk in truth. Hallelujah. That is our goal for this moment. You should be breathing truth, seeing truth, thinking truth, and the word of God is true. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. So your pursuit should be, it should increase during these times. Praise the Lord. In our last lesson, we shared about the timelines and end times. We talked about the church age. You remember that? We talked about the recent signs of the end times. And I told us that these two are the current era of events that we're in right now. Okay? And the third one that we're expecting after this season that we are is the departure of the church. You know, which many people know as the rapture. Okay? And by the way, there's no word rapture in the Bible. I think I said that last time. So, so we're expecting departure from this body to happen, the catching away of the saints. In fact, that's how the Bible puts it, the catching away of the saints. Then we, we, Paribus, so at the same time, while that is occurring, it is believed by some scholars that, you know, the, the Gog and Magog war is going to be happening at the same time. Some believe it's going to be after. But regardless of when it happens or not, because nobody has the time. We don't know. We only see events that happen at some point in time. Uh, amen? So, and after the, the, the war of Gog and Magog, we're going to experience what is called the seven years of tribulation. Those that remain, so we will be, I mean, that seven years of tribulation is going to be divided into two. You have three and a half years events, then you're going to have another three and a half years events, alright? Just like Jesus spoke in the book of Mark that we read last week, it, there's a, there's a reference to it in the book of Matthew chapter 24 also, where the Bible says that because from verse 12. Matthew 24 from verse 12. The Bible says, and because lawlessness will abound. Do you see that? Because what we abound? Lawlessness. That these people won't follow the rule of law anymore. And that is going to bring chaotic situations. And it's happening right now, isn't it? People want to do away with the rule of law. Lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. Why will the love of many grow cold? Because those that thought or that have hold their allegiance to the rule of law will find out that those that they trusted or that they believe in are now against the rule of law. Now they will be disbelieved what they used to believe in. So their love will grow with wax cold. Verse 13 says, but he who ends just the end shall be saved. So that means there's some group of people that will be saved during those times. And this kingdom of the gospel will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Hallelujah. Like now the gospel is flying around. It's going to every nooks and crannies of the path of the, of the earth. I think I've said this before, and it bears repetition. There are so many Islamic countries that people are now receiving Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. where, you, where there used to be 
dominant of the Islamic nations, people within that nations that are not open to Christ before are now receiving Christ into their lives. Amen. Amen. So, and we need to understand that this gospel is being preached in all the world. And verse 15 says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of the Daniel, the prophet, spoken of by the Daniel, the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. So we are reading to do what? To gain understanding. You don't just pick up the Bible and read it like newspaper. It's not New York Times Post. It is the word of God. And no child of God must walk in ignorance. Except he chooses to. So, and Jesus was saying, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of it. I mean, we read that kind, you know, in the book of Mark last week, isn't it? And in verse 20, he said, and pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. Aha, uh -huh, that's, that's an addition there. Not in winter or on the Sabbath. Sabbath is a rest day. The day you want to rest, my if <laughs> with the Lord have mercy on us. If the day you are supposed to be at work is the day you are resting, then there's problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We understand the winter part, the Sabbath part is that means there is no time to rest on our laurels to think we have arrived. Hallelujah. There is a lot to achieve in Christ Jesus. In this kingdom, there's so much more to do. So much more. So understand that. I mean, you must include that in your prayer points. Amen. Amen. Every one of you must be praying this prayer from today on. Pray that your flight may not be in winter or in Sabbath. So is it is Sabbath day is the day when you choose to say, oh, all these spiritual activities, I think I'm old enough now. I want to rest. You don't rest from spiritual activities. You might not have all the energy to run around, but you don't you engage with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis till you see Jesus face to face. Amen. 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 Now, this scripture is laying emphasis on what Amos, Prophet Amos, saw in the book of Amos that we read earlier. Now let's look at how Prophet Amos described the end in his own, I mean, in his own way as the Holy Spirit gave him the utterance back in the Old Testament. Amos chapter 5, verse 16 to 20. The Bible says, Therefore the Lord, God of hosts, the Lord says this, There shall be willing in all streets. And they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, they shall call the farmer to mourning and skillful lamenters to wailing. In all fires they shall be wailing, for I will pass through you, says the Lord. Now listen, when God passes through with vengeance, nobody can stand up. I have not seen the holy man on earth that can stand his presence. The man he permitted to see his back. He passed before he opened the eyes of that man. Even that man would have fried, and his name was Moses. He would just evaporate like that. But he kept, he said, I will keep you in the cleft of the rock, which is the side of Jesus. That's the place of mercy. He covered him. The Bible, I mean, I don't know if you have read that scripture before. He covered him on his on the side. So when the Bible speaks about Jesus, who was crucified even before the foundations of the earth, the work of the cross was already completed before Jesus came. So people have been enjoying, one of the guys that enjoyed it before Jesus came was Moses. Hallelujah. He kept him there and he passed by because there, in Christ Jesus, if God sees you in Christ Jesus, you are forever, eternally saved. And by the time he passed back, he opened it up, and there you see, you could see just somebody passed by, saw the back. And without seeing the back, the eyes would not 
And there was so much light. No human could look at him anymore. So when God says, I'm going to pass by, nothing can stop him. He said, For I will pass through you, says the Lord. Verse 18. So what to you would desire the day of the Lord? For what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be what? Darkness and no light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion. Can you see that? You're running away from the lion and now a bear just being on the way. Which one is safer? None. Or as though he went into the house, leaned his head on the wall and his serpent beat him. Can you imagine you're running all the way from outside? The lion is, is coming after you and you, you are able to run. You outrun the lion, okay? I've never seen a man that can actually outrun a lion. But let's say you have the spirit of Samson. Or you, or you can run on the spirit of Elijah and just <laughs> move like that. And while you had landed, you eventually met a bear. Uh, okay, if you say, oh, the bear cannot run like me, you still run and escape. By the time you are getting into your house and you are trying to rest from that struggle, the Bible says, to be like a man leaning on his, leaning his hand on the wall and it's happening. This is how it was described the day of the Lord. The end time events. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a season that is full of all kinds of crises. Are you with me? So we need to understand these details and make sure we, you know, put our hearts onto wisdom. Hallelujah. And last week, we we I I was in the book of uh, we were in the book of Revelation chapter six where we talked about the first seal, the second seal, the third, the fourth, amen, and the and the fifth, the fifth is the crying, the cry of the martyrs. You remember when they were crying unto God and saying, "Oh Lord, avenge us," and God said, "You just hold your peace." One thing I have seen, I have learned over the years, is that. It is only God that owns the timing of our lives. The time, if you are going through a phase, the time you will get out of that phase, it is God that knows the timing. Are you with me? You will put in your effort to do all that you want to do, but it is only God that knows the timing. So, God told them, said, hey, it was a Revelation chapter 6, verse uh, Verse 9 it says, When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice. That's verse 10 now. Saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And the Bible says that then, verse 11. Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest. Everyone say rest. Rest. Rest a little while longer, until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. I mean, only God knows why he was doing that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only God knows what knows why he was with him. And you can't query him. You just need to follow his leading. Praise the Lord. So let's continue with the, the sixth seal today. All that I've said is just a preamble. The sixth seal is in verse 12 of the book of Revelation chapter 6. Right? It says, I looked when he opened the sixth seal. And behold, there was a great what? Earthquake. And the sun became black. And sat cloth of hair. And the moon became like blood. We're talking about the, the full moon, the blood moon. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded 
as a scroll when it is rolled up. And every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Pause there a little bit. I told you that when the king of kings, the king of glory moves, nothing can stand in his way. Not even the high mountains. I remember the last time we, we traveled to, was it West Virginia? You know, we traveled, we're driving in between the mountains. It was like the mountains were going to swallow us. They were that, if anything happening between those mountains, nobody will ever know on the face of the earth that something happened. We were driving through in between the mountains. They were as high as heaven. And the Bible says, these mountains, when the king of glory moves, what, what will happen? They will be displaced. <laughs> the Bible says that, the, you know, the sky will see it as a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Moved. Little wonder when Jesus was teaching and he said, if only if you have a faith as a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain to move. That means mountains hear the word. The only language they understand is when faith moves. I don't want to get out of the line of my teaching, but you know, let's let's stay there. Verse 15 says that the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Follow on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? Now, this is what is, you know, subtitled as a cosmic disturbance. Right? Cosmic disturbance. You see, this is one of the reasons why we need to put our faith more in God. To believe more what Jesus has spoken. It's not your idea for you to be here. It is God's idea. Are you with me? Either you are born out of wedlock or inside wedlock or on top of wedlock or under wedlock. I don't care. It was never your idea to be on this planet us. Somebody released you here. And to every seed that is born, there is a purpose. There is a reason. That is why you don't look into the past, you look into the world. And the world will show you the future, where your future belongs, regardless of how you, how you started. Are you with me? The past, they do say, is the enemy of the present. And they do say that the present is the enemy of the future. So that's why the Bible says that we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That means he started it, it began in, uh, he started in uh, Abraham. Amen? He is the one that started it. Hallelujah. He's been walking all along, although his name was not mentioned. It was the presence of God. It was God. Hallelujah. So he, he, he was the author and he is the finisher of our faith. That's why if you, if you look unto Jesus for every iota of decisions you want to take, it will appear to you to help you to make the right decisions. Hallelujah. So we must understand this now, when this will happen, you know, this coming is going to affect everybody and everything upon the face of the earth. You can see what verse 15 says. It's going to affect the kings of the earth, talking about the presidents. It's going to affect the great men, those who have powers, those who, when they, they do this, nations can crumble. You know? And when you, you look at the rich men, yeah, they are actually rich, so God knows they were rich. And the Bible says that they were rich. Rich men, 
And it says, in, 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 the, the commanders, talking about the military, you know, the mighty men, talking about those, the, the snipers, those who can fight words, who can, who, who are, who are, they, they have sharp eye. So even the slaves, even every free man, will hide themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountain. And they will be talking to the mountain to cover them. <laughs> the mountain that they were supposed to use faith for to move, now they will be begging the mountain to be covering for them. So follow us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. And he who is the one that sits on the throne. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe the word of God, you are believing the right thing. If you are a Christian, you are on the right path. Because he that sits upon the throne is coming back. Remember the song we sang? To him who sits on the throne. We sang it last week. And unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So, when the catching of the saints happen and we are gone, some will still be here. Are you with me? Some people will still be here. And in that process, some believers will still be saved. So there will still be, but those, those ones will be like, they are saved through, through fire. But there will still be some that will say, no, I will not concur to the dictates of this beast. Because everybody will have to receive the mark of the beast. I think who was, who was asking me, one of my kids was asking me the other day, you know, that, you know, why is the mark of the beast 666? I think it was after last week, a message, you know, the question time. Yeah. You know, because without that mark, people won't be able to buy it or, you know, you can't even work because nobody will take you at work. Come next year, you're going to see a few things that will be happening. See, a few things will be happening. Those changes will be manifesting themselves in a very high speed. Are you following me? Because right now, the nations are gathering. And they're going to have one man who is going to be like a cultic leader that everybody must bow to, to do his will. And that person is going to turn the rule of law upside down. It's happening in our, right before our faces. So, this group of people who will, you know, during the tribulations, the saints of God that are here, you know, will, you know, after the catching up of the saints, will experience the seven years of tribulation. Okay? And it's going to be terrible. It's going to be terrible, terrible, terrible. Like we read in, in the book of Revelation, I mean, let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation 20, you're going to see from verse 4 to 6. The Bible says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the beast or his image. Do you see that? So those are, the, those are those that remained here and had not received his mark or their, on their foreheads or on their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ for what? For a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first Resurrection. Verse 6 now says, Blessed and holy is he who is part of the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Listen, that means there's something called the second death. I, I've thought that here in the church. Maybe I need to revisit it again. There's what is called the second death. This physical departure that we call death and we cry and mourn over when people leave this planet uh, is is the ephemeral phase of death. In the second death, you want to cry for them, there will be no tears. 
May we, not our loved ones, not experience the second death. Amen. We pray that prayer, but they have to do the do. <laughs> they, they act. So the church started with Israel and it will also end with them. So the two witnesses in Israel on the Temple Mount and the 144,000 Jews that the Bible mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter 7 and chapter 14, you know, talks about those people, they will evangelize the earth after the, the very first catching away. Are you with me? No, those that will be here after the tribulation will or will will evangelize on the earth. And in fact, that experience is going to bring more people to Christ. Because by then, people will be seeing that, no, we've been, they've been deceived all these years. Are you with me? Now, many people will be saved according to the scriptures. And the first thing the Antichrist will do is to stop the sacrifices and the offerings of the temple. Because during the time, the, the, the coming together of those nations, are you with me, is making ready for the Antichrist to come. And once the rise of Antichrist comes in, that's the person that's going to introduce the, the mark of the beast, that's the person is going to be very political, it's going to be civil and political. Are you with me? It won't sound like a spiritual thing. It won't be spiritual. So people won't know what he was doing. Are you with me? In fact, there will be Christians that will support such, such antichrist. Because remember what John said that the, the, the antichrist is not an outsider. They are the people that went out of us. Are you with me? And which means it is those that believe in Christ before but now stand against the rule of Christ. Okay, so now number one thing that Antichrist is going to do is to stop the sacrifices and offerings of the temple. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, we'll read verse 27. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. The Bible says, then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to what? Sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolation. Now what that implies is that the regular sacrifices that is going on in the church, the worship of God in the church, will be stopped by the Antichrist. Alright? It will be stopped by the Antichrist. Now, Revelation chapter 11, verse 7 to 10. Can we go there? Revelation 11, 7 to 10 says, When they finish their testimony, the beasts that are sent out of the bottomless pit will make war against them. It's talking about the saints, you know, and overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the streets. I think they are here talking about witnesses, you know, and their dead body will lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. When you hear names like that, look at the significance of it spiritually. Sodom is one of the cities God destroyed. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And we know the reason why God did it. They were against God. They were practicing homosexuality, practicing all kinds of, uh, you know, all kind of immorality and stuff like that. And for Egypt, Egypt was uh, the place where Pharaoh was that refused to release the children of God. Mm. So he's talking about those symbols. See, it, it, it symbolizes those situations or those cities or those countries 
that is going to be porous with sexual immoralities and those countries that is going to be, you know, to be uh, capturing the saints of God, not allowing them to have freedom to serve God the way they should, all right? Mm-hmm. And where also our Lord was crucified. Verse 9 says, Then those from the people's tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half years and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves for three and a half years. Okay. What? Okay. Three and a half days, pardon me. Yeah, three and a half days, all right? You know, and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. Verse 10 says, And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Then we're going to have what is called the battle of Armageddon. Revelation chapter 16, verse 16. Let's read from verse 12 to 16. Are you following me? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be and I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, coming out of the mouth of the dragon. The dragon is the devil, by the way. Out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets. So the false prophets are, those are the false prophets in the body of Christ. Okay. They're preaching right now. Mm. Mm. Verse 40 says, For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief, as Jesus speaking there. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shape. And they gather them together to the place called in Hebrew, Amaga. So that battle is going to occur. And the Antichrist is going to think that he can build an army that can fight against Christ and win. Because he has physical weapon. He's going to have all the, you know, you can shoot up into the sky, you know, you know, he, the, the Antichrist will think he, he can, he can, he can bomb the heavens. <laughs> he can use nuclear weapon against God. Oh, may God give us understanding. Yeah. Like I said, the church began with Israel and it's going to end with Israel, right? The present situation in Israel now makes no one to know or has the answer to the situation and the Antichrist will step in and somehow kind of have a brilliant answer. You know what is going on in Israel right now? The war against Gaza, against the, you know, the Palestinians, you know, they've been trapped, they have us, and they are trying to meddle that. But as they try to do it, they, if something will happen and they will just disagree. So, I mean, those that they believe that can talk to them, try it, but it is abortive. So right now, nobody is uh, talking about ceasefire, and when the Antichrist comes, he will appear like somebody who has a brilliant answer to solve the solution. Watch out. When he comes. Okay? What did I say? Watch out when he comes, because it's going to come. And he will talk about the rebuilding of the first temple. Alright? And I think I'm going to stop there for today. And I'm going to, you know, uh, pick it up from the rebuilding of the temple. We're talking about the Israel that has the red heifers. I'm going to let you know what red heifer is, why the heifers is so significant for the sacrifice of the temple, how spiritual significance it means. 
Are you with me? So the Antichrist is going to come. And he's going to have a brilliant answer to think that he find he has solution to the case of Israel. But it is all in the program of God. Are you with me? Till he now opens us all to what is happening. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Your word is yea and amen. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for not leaving us in the dark, but to help us to know what is happening in our generation. And for us to know what to do in such a time as this. Give us understanding, Lord. To everyone listening right now, Father, give us understanding. To everyone listening, watching right now, Lord, give us understanding. Help us to live a life of understanding so that we don't live ignorantly and die ignorantly in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.